The stitches are in. I'll need to see you again in a few days. Would you like some pills for the pain? Nah, stitches never bother me. I'll be fine. Great. Then let me get another bandage and we'll be done. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Cavill, can we ask you a few follow-up questions about the fire? We already told you everything we can remember. Oh, this will only take a moment. It's come to our attention that the owner of the club and your son got into a fight minutes before the fire broke out. Now, did you witness that? I saw a grown man beating up on my teenage boy. What else do you want to know? During the altercation, did your son threaten to kill Mr. Schilling? No. Really? Well, I was right there, Detective. My son said no such thing. You sure? Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Maybe I'm being a little paranoid here, but I sort of got the feeling that you were lying to the police. Lynette, please tell me that Porter did not threaten to kill Mr. Schilling. I've got the bandage. You might want to go ahead and give him those pain pills, Doc. He's going to need them. I don't believe it. Tom, I was six feet away. Porter looked Warren Schilling in the eye and said, you're dead. I don't care what it takes, you're dead. That doesn't prove a thing. And I'm sure he didn't mean it. Maybe he didn't. But ten minutes later, that nightclub was on fire. No. No. I know Porter. He wouldn't commit arson just to get back at someone. What about Rick's restaurant? Porter and his brother burned that down. That was five years ago. They, they were trying to protect us. They, they, nobody got hurt. The building was empty. Yes. That time, the building was empty. This is insane. Lynette, you actually telling me that our son is a murderer? I'm telling you I heard him threaten Warren Schilling. I don't know what happened next. What if somebody saw him? What if he left behind evidence? What are we going to do? We're going to protect our son. Even if he killed six people? We're going to protect our son. Okay. <laughs>